Thank you, Brother Lindsay. Good evening, audience. Sorry of the difficult of the speaking. Can you hear me? All right, that's fine. God will surely take care of it for us. <clears throat> we try to do what is right. Tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, Brother Lindsay told me to be in for services tomorrow afternoon at 2. That will not interfere with anyone's uh, service then. Everyone will, their church service, be able to be out and have the service. So remember that. And then to, again tomorrow night is regular preaching service, a regular healing service, rather. Tomorrow afternoon is preaching service. And try to come out if you possibly can. We'd sure be glad to have you. How many here is Christians? Let's see your hand. Oh, isn't that wonderful? About 99% of the people are Christians. I'm glad of that. To know that the biggest part of the audience is already saved and found Jesus dear to their hearts. Now, I want to read just a little bit of the Word first. My Word will fail, but God's Word will never fail. Over in the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 27th verse, you who mark it, and if the Lord willing, tomorrow afternoon I want to speak on the subject, I never know, but if He's willing, come and see a man who told me all things. All right, in the 27th verse of the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, we read this. And when Jesus had departed since, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus strictly charged them, saying, See that no man knoweth it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. And they went out, and behold, they brought unto him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. You notice what it was that had the dumb man bound? A devil. I'm quite sure that modern science wouldn't agree with that, but as Christians we believe what the Bible says. And the dumb... Let's see just a moment. Pardon me, the 33rd verse again. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitude marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He cast out devils through the prince of the devils. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease, every sickness and every disease among the people. Hebrews says that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's never changes. He's God. And now, one of the most wonderful things of God and the Christians, the connection of the fellowship between God and Christians is that they that are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Can you hear me all right now in the back? Is it all right? If you can, raise your hands if you can hear back there all right. That's fine. And I'm trying to stand just as close as possible to this microphone that may give a roar. I do not know. But the greatest thing I found in Christian life is letting the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. And His work is marvelous. How many in here has ever been led by the Spirit? Let's see your hand. Oh, my, that's wonderful led by the Spirit of God. 
There's no one to lead you to the altar but the Spirit of God. There's no one to bring you here tonight unless it was the Spirit of God. Is that right? He moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. Many times in the leading, since I was a little boy, Sunday a week if we get to stay that long, I wish to tell my life story Sunday a week in the afternoon service to let you know just what tears and blood has been along the road. Someone might think it's all roses, but that isn't so, friends. Now, many times, the only, the only time that I can ever be able to say anything to people about their diseases and so forth is when being definitely led by the Spirit. I have to let Him do it. If I would say something within myself, it would certainly be a mistake. Many times it confuses me when there's so many. The best way, when I have the patient to myself, individually talking to them, to contact them personally. But when it's sometimes, when it's in a mixed audience like this, it's kind of hard to, to feel just what it is and to know what it is, but you have to be very sensitive to spirit. Now we realize, and everyone knows there is spirit, that there's spirit, there's bound to be a master of that spirit because it changes the nature of sinners into Christians. And there's bound to be a master ahead there somewhere, and that's God. And he sent his Son on earth, made in likeness of sinful flesh, and he died that we might be redeemed and brought back to God to be sons and daughters of God, to walk with him again. That missing link from the Garden of Eden, but Adam lost, Christ restored again. Many times wish we had time to bank up there for a little while to speak, but just have about eight minutes or ten. I would just like to give you a few experiences. I just could open my heart to you, and talk to you. There's many times, Christian friends, I guess it won't be much longer. We'll probably be able to have a few more healing services. Now, I'm afraid that services are going to be closed, services like this. we got trouble ahead, and you know it. So we want to put in everything that we can, and probably when we leave here, I may never see many of you again the rest of my life. We may never meet no more. So let's be sincere with each other and sincere with God, and he'll deal with us while we have this golden opportunity. I'd like to sit down and talk with each of you a day, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't spend my time in prayer seeking for God. But I'll make an appointment with you after we cross the river. I'll spend all the time you want to. We'll just sit down and by the evergreen tree, by the sea of life, and there talk with each other a thousand years. Want to be wonderful? At that time, I'd like to shake your hand and say you remember down in Minneapolis those times when we tried to be together, just look how it is now. If you want to know when I get home, I, I'm going to try to sing Amazing Grace when I cross the stream. I can't sing, but I've always wanted to sing that song. I believe God will let me do it when I get over there. If you have to go over before I do and you hear somebody come out on the porch some morning, hear somebody sing an Amazing Grace, you say, Brother Branham got home. That's me. I love the old song, for it's Amazing Grace that saved me, brought me thus far. Many times things happen along in the leading of the Spirit that I don't even mention. Don't say nothing about it. Visions are constantly seen. And I'll try to explain to you how that's done. It sees the individual, sees the way they're moving, what they've done in their life, and it just comes just as real as I'm looking at you. I don't believe any of you could doubt that after seeing it work in the meeting, which has never got to its place yet, or the meeting has been, we've had lots of trouble in speaking in a tent, and we're new to each other, and it's new here. But I'm very thankful that you're receiving it wonderfully. I can always feel each night look like just more of the momentum of faith arising all the time. 
I believe that before the meeting closes, if God permits, there's going to be a great sweep like you've never seen before. See how close that is to being right now. Notice, sometimes he shows me things and I never speak it. Now, right now, since I've been standing here, I see four or five things that's already gone on since I've been speaking here at the microphone. But I do not speak it till I see that something has happened. My manager and them, many times, I know this seems a little strange and kind of hard, maybe, for ministers and so forth to just grasp it right now unless they're very spiritual-minded, but I can only be honest. And here not long ago when we met in England, just for a couple experiences, I was in my room one day and I went and told my manager, I said, I was sitting in the room and I seen a vision of Satan coming to us. Told him just about how long it would be, somewhere within about 24 hours, and there it happened. One morning, I remember getting up, going down into the city, about 5 o'clock. He woke me up. He said, get on your clothes. And I went out of the city. I walked about three miles. I believe that was in Ernstelvik, Herbru it was, Norway, or Sweden. And I went under a tree by a river, and I prayed till 9 o'clock, from 5 until 9. Then about 9 o'clock, he wouldn't let me go. I know they'd be wondering where I was at when they got to the room, and I wasn't there. So I was praying. I heard his voice say, rise up now. I rose up. Now, it's just not just imagination, friends. My, his voice is just as audible as mine is to you. Just as not. When he stands there, it's not just what you just imagine. I hear him when he's walking. Look at him. Talk to him like you talk to me or I talk to you. It's a being, not just an imagination. Man, I can hear him when he puts his feet down, walks, and when he talks, he just talks like I do. Oh, he's got a, a voice that would very humble in one way and then very stern in another. His characters, no man could paint them. It's like if he'd speak, uh, turn the world upside down, yet he's so meek when you look at him, you'd almost cry. And he said, get up. And I got up and started walking. And I walked about a mile, and I was going by a store that I'd seen the day before. I didn't know what to do, only walk. He said, walk. I thought, I'll just go around this corner. And I got to the corner. He said, turn to your right. I went to the right two squares and then said, turn to your left. And just in a split second, I'd seen my interpreter from the night before. And I knew something was going to happen because it just kept getting closer and closer. I knew what was going to happen was going to be right away. He came up to me and shook my hand. And there he said, Brother Branham, it's something strange. I said, just a moment. And I began to tell him. And he looked at me. And when it did, I seen us in a vision standing there when he was translating the night before. I said, you just come from the hospital, haven't you? He said, yes, sir. I said, you had one of your kidneys removed. He said, that's right. I just met him the day before. All the things in the platform that night. I said, about three or four years ago, you were supposed to do something, and you did not do it. Isn't that true? He said, that's right. I said, then, you had an operation, and since your operation, it's went over into the other kidney. Is that right? He said, that's right. I said, last night when I was praying in a congregational prayer, didn't you take your hand and take hold of my coat like that real easy? He just started crying, his te- hands up in the air. So that's right, Brother Ben. And I asked God last night, if that was so, that he would confirm it. And about a half hour ago, he told me, get up and go down on the street. And at just one second time, and I would have missed him. That was confirmed of his healing, how God works in mysterious ways. I went up and met Brother Moore, Brother Lindsay and them. We went downtown. He's going to walk me around just a little for the spirit was still anointing. I keep walking lots of times that way because I can't be still then. Went downtown. We stand looking in the window, and I said, Brother Moore, but yeah, I said, now on the road back, there'll be a man with a dark suit on the light hat step out of the building asking me to go pray for his wife, only I can't do it. He said, when will that happen? I said, on a, sometime this morning. I said, because when the vision came, it's the same morning. And we'd been gone about a half hour. After that, we turned around a corner, stepping out of a store, came a man with a black suit on, a gray hat, took his hat on, said, Brother Branham, I'm so glad to meet you. Said, I've got my wife upstairs here. Just yes, Brother Moore said, what about that? We went on in, brother back to the next manager. That afternoon we were walking, went downtown, standing there on the street. I said, I see two women dressed in dark that's coming out of a store. will stop us pretty shortly, Brother Baxter. 
and we'd gone just about two squares and was looking in a man stored some pies. And just then, coming out of the same store, came two ladies dressed in pack and went up to us and getting a hold of their hands. They couldn't talk English, but wanted a, a discernment of spirit of what was wrong with them on their hand. Brother Baxter said, I, well, now, those things happen all the time. But I, I don't mention them, friends, unless it's something that will profit or benefit something like that. Now, many times that Christians praying, there was a lady sat here last night, had a little baby. Uh, many of you here probably was here last night with a lady I was hunting for as a little baby. You remember that? Uh, she had been in prayer about that. And in the room, I saw her. I couldn't make out just what kind of a dress that was, but I seen she had her hair braided and blonde-headed and had a little baby. And the Lord had showed that the baby was to be healed, and the baby was healed before we left the building last evening. Now, it's wonderful. Recently in Fort Wayne, we were having a meeting. How many has ever been? Well, was anybody here at the Fort Wayne meeting? Somebody perhaps? Yes, here's uh, two or three hands is here at the Fort Wayne meeting. Marvelous crowds gathered. B.E. Rediger. How many ever heard of B.E. Rediger years ago? Paul Rader. Wrote his song, Only Believe. And his meeting there, where Mr. Rediger had some daughters, he's gone on to glory quite a while ago. On the nation's most outstanding man on divine healing, I just returned from Pensacola, Florida, where I had the largest altar call I ever had. 2,000 at one time gave their hearts to Christ. One altar call. And I had just come home. And I entered into the little church that morning. There was packed several hundred around the church. They was trying to get me out, and someone told me, said, a, daughter, a girl, a psychopathic case, laying back in the coal shed of the church, said, Mrs. Rediger. I said, Mrs. Rediger, what relation are they to B.E. Rediger? So that's his daughter. B.E. Rediger, a warrior of God, resting in glory, and his daughter, a mental case, his other daughter died in the same condition. She had been a mental case in the institution for about two years. There she was, her mother trying to hold her, a beautiful young lady, her hair down, sitting back there and just holding her eyes, staring. I walked into where she was. She began to move back, honey, mumming her mouth like that, saying something about Penny or something other, and moving back like that. So Miss Rediger looked up, and I said, oh, my, is that Brother Rediger's daughter? said, it is. I said, dear Lord Jesus, have mercy on the girl. And asked for that power of the enemy to leave the girl. In a moment, she was to herself. And today I got a letter. She's going to be married in August. How glorious. How the mental institution. And how glorious it is to find his leading. There in Fort Wayne, they found out what hotel I was staying in. The Indiana Hotel. And the people crowded in the lobby till we had to hire one of the bellboys to get us a way to go out and down through the alley over in ash piles to get something to eat so many people in there crowding in then all of a sudden one day we was going down the street my wife was with me had the baby i had my coat collar up it was going down the street packing my little girl we were going down to the place called i believe the toddle house or hobble house or something where we were eating there was where mr eaton of canada had met there in a room that morning bent the meeting to be healed of a stomach trouble and god healed him down the tabernacle a few days later he wouldn't come to where I was eating that morning. He just paid for my breakfast. The next morning, going down, walking down the street, something said, turn to your left. Mrs. Morgan, 21-year graduate nurse, my first case of cancer ever felt the vibration, weighed 37 pounds, brought into the meeting, just under the skin and bone. She weighs 155, now in perfect health. The doctors, the best there was in the nation, sold her. She had just a few days to live. It went all through her. This opened up and sold her back. Cancer just tough to her, malignant. Nothing could be done. Couldn't even put a knife on her, no one, to, to operate. Now she weighs 157 pounds in perfect health. She was going along kind of healthy sometimes with a stick along like that because she's a very brilliant woman. And we were going down, and something said, turn to your left. I heard it just the same as you hear me. I turned to the left. Margie said to my wife, said, what's the matter? I said, now just let him go. I went on down. We went walking down to the left. I stopped at a place called Miller's Cafeteria. I wondered why something said, go in here. 
I went to the cafeteria, got some little breakfast and prunes and so forth and sat down. My wife said, you're sure a big place like this to get trapped? People gather around. And I started to eat. And as I asked the blessing, I heard somebody say, praise the Lord. I looked over and poor old mother was raising up, wiping her eyes. Margie said, you better go. Said, you don't, the whole group. I said, just a moment, is the Holy Spirit leading? She come over there and said, Brother Branham. But I followed meeting after meeting, trying to get my brother in the line. I couldn't do it. But his heart was so bad not to push through the diaphragm. That we was examined a few days ago before coming doctor said he just has a little while to live. We sold our cow to get the money to come up here from Texas. So we've been to several meetings. We sold all we got. So I have seen I couldn't get it. There's too many there. I've had cards several times, but the number's never been called. She said, but I was praying last night, all night and fasting. She said, and about daylight this morning, I woke up and I had a dream, and I dreamed that I should come down here to the cafeteria and wait at 9 o'clock. And I looked at my watch, it's just exactly 9. They bring him here. You know what happened, don't you? The Lord marvelously healed him, leading of the Spirit. He works on both ends. Then, going out the door, we're just leaving, went out the door about two minutes after, didn't eat. And a young lady standing there, fell down on the street and began screaming just as went out the door, dressed in black. She lived in Chicago Heights, malignant cancer. Said, Brother Branham, I prayed, I've been praying for weeks that I could get here. And so it just got a little while. She'd been to the clinic here, and nothing could be done for her. Her husband was a great businessman there of some sort. And she said, this morning early, that something told me to come to Miller's cafeteria and stand here at 10 minutes after 9. There it was. I met her in a little rock here a few weeks ago, just shouting the praises of God perfectly normal and well. Went walking on down the street. The Holy Spirit said, stop here. I told the wife, I said, you all go on. The, they'll get you in the hotel. She said, well, I'll cross the drugstore over there to get some books, colored books. Had to keep the baby in the room all the time. And I stopped, and I went back up looking at some fish and tackle, and I waited just a moment. I said, Father, what is it you would have me do? And I waited a few moments. I heard that voice say, go down to the corner. I went down to the corner, standing at the corner that crossed the street. I went across the street to stand there. You people from Fort Wayne know how they direct the traffic there. And it was on a Saturday morning, and I stood there for quite a while. After a while, I seen a lady crossing the street, the whistle blow many times. A lady crossing the street holding a pocketbook on her arm, and she's dressed in a checkered suit and a little checkered tam on. She walked. The Holy Spirit said, go close to her. I went and stood there. The woman may be in this meeting tonight, for all I know. And I stood right there on the corner, and she passed out on by and went by. I thought, that's strange. He never did tell me anything wrong. She walked about the distance that pole. She's looking down, looking sideways. And she turned around, looked back, and said, oh, Brother Brandon. She come back. And she started crying, and she said, I'm from Canada. She said, I followed all through Canada. So I come over here and only allowed so much money. Last night, so I slept sitting in a hotel lobby. And this morning, I had one five cents for a cup of coffee, but I was going out here to hitchhike home. But I was just two squares below, and the Holy Spirit said, turn to your right. But I went to the right, he said, turn to your left, and I was being led by him, said, turn around and see, he said, Brother Branham, my hands be crippled. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, give me that hand. And here come the hand straight, a big Irish cop blowing a whistle, said, I know who you are, Brother Branham. My, we had a prayer line here on the street in a few moments. It was just everywhere. What is it? Led of the Spirit of God. That's what it is, friends. Recently on my road to Dallas, I hurry quickly, on my road going to Dallas, the plane was grounded, and I thought, oh my, I stayed all night, the next morning I was going down to put my mail in the box, they told us they'd come pick us up. I was going down the street, trying to sing that little old Christian song, the Pentecost folk sing, uh, glad that I can say I'm one of them. Did you ever hear it? It's, uh, people almost everywhere, it's hearts all burning with flames, as a fire fell on, the Holy Ghost makes us all the same, or something like that. And I was trying to sing it, going down the street, my letters in my hand, going walking along down the street. I started across the street. The Holy Spirit said, stop, right in front of a bank, Memphis, Tennessee. I thought, oh, my, what's this? 
I walked over in the corner. I said, Father, what would you have me do? I stood still for a few moments because I wasn't thinking about it. I felt that real strange feeling move on me. The turn and go right back. And I went right back down past the hotel again, just kept on going down the street, humming to myself. Uh, I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. Going on, went way on down to the other side of Memphis, on down to the colored district. I thought, what am I doing down here? Just led by the Spirit. And I looked. They crossed this way and across the other street, went down the other side. I was going over there. Turned to my right, went up the street this way. All the little whitewashed places there, little colored places where the colored live. And I passed by and I seen a typical old Aunt Jemima with a shirt, man's shirt tied around her head, leaning over uh, the gate. The sun was coming up, roses around the gate, the sun kissing away the fragrance away from the roll, and the air was full, the birds were singing, how glorious, and I had my hand going on like that singing, led of the Spirit. I looked at her as I passed by, she was leaning over the gate, she said, good morning, Parson. That down in the south, it's Parson, you know, instead of... I said, good morning, Andy. She wiped the tears from her eyes, getting laughing. I said, how did you know I was a Parson? Do you know me? She said, no, sir. I said, how did you know I was a parson? That parson, did you ever hear about that uh, woman in the Bible, the Shumanite woman? I said, yes. I said, the Lord gave her a child? I said, yes. So Oz was a woman that was barren, too. And the Lord gave me a son. And said, I promised to raise him for the Lord. That I've done my best. But said, parson, he took the road that's wrong. Said, he's a fine young man, and he backslid. And said, he went out with the wrong company. And said, He's laying in here now. The, the doctors have done give him all the shots they can. He's been unconscious now for two days. The doctor says that he is going to die. It's venereal disease. That done give him everything could be given, but it was too late before they caught it, and he is going to die. And said, Parson, when I know him laying there dying a backslider, that I couldn't stand it. But I prayed and prayed, and I said, Lord, you gave me the boy, but where is Elisha at? So, so I prayed and I prayed and said, This morning, a little four days, said the Lord told me to come out here and stand at this gate. And her back was wet with dew. So I just stood here because said, I believe in the leading of the Spirit. Oh, my. There is where God and believer meet together on common grounds of faith. She said, he told me to stand here and said, the sun came up, but I just kept waiting. When you come down the street, said, I know you as the parson. I said, my name is Branham. She told me what her name was. I said, did you ever hear my services? No, the parson. I told her about it. The tears began to run down her cheeks. Said, I know the Lord wouldn't fail me. We went into the room. There laid a fine, big boy laying there, about 160 or 70 pounds, a picture of health. The blankets gathered in his hands like this, going, mmm, mmm. And she walked over and patted him on the cheek. She said, Mammy's baby might be old as he was, but you know there's a mother's love. You're always Mama's baby. You know that mother's love, no matter what you do, it's never forgotten. Mother's love. So she patted him on the cheek, said, Mama's baby. And I took a hold of his feet. His feet was cold. Oh, all my dying. I said, Andy, he's in awful bad shape. He said, yes, the parson, the doctor said he'd never gain conscious no more. I held his feet and I said, shall we pray? She said, yes, parson. She knelt down on the floor and she began praying. I tell you, that old saint prayed a prayer that you know she's talking to God to. And when she got through praying, she said, thank you, dear Lord. I walked over to where he was at, looked at him a little bit, and I laid my hands over on him. I said, Dear God, I don't know why you led me down here. My plane's ready to leave now. But I said, I don't know why you led me here, but I just come by the leading. And now, in the name of your son, Jesus, I lay hands upon this dying boy for his life or his soul to be saved. I said, Mammy, oh, Mammy. She said, He's talking, Parson. Hadn't talked for two days. That mammy's getting light. 
that it's getting light in here, Mammy. I see where my boats are going now. In a few minutes, he was on the floor rejoicing, happy. About a week later, I got a letter from him. The doctor's pronounced him negative. He's living tonight in Memphis, Tennessee, healthy and strong because that his dear old mother followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. Those that are sons and daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. Isn't that right? Let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, oh, you've been so good to us. Time gets away so easy when we're talking about Jesus, talking about his wonderful works. Here in the earth today, he said a little while, the world will see me no more. The world doesn't understand. They're blinded by the God of this world, walking in darkness in their own way, in their own sinful lust. But we thank thee. Thou hast said, I'll be with you even in you unto the end of the world. Tonight, wherever you can find a sincere heart, you'll lead them by your spirit. Oh, God, this Saturday night when many people are shopping, many are out, road houses, places of ill fame, young boys laying on the barroom floor, young girls, the road that's wrong, dancing their way to a Christless grave and the old mother's prayers right over the top of them. Oh, Master, somehow lead those people tonight. Speak to them, and may they find a place tomorrow at a good old-fashioned altar to become your servant. Lord, may the results of this meeting be an old-fashioned revival, break out that will sweep plumb through the cities and the nation. For we believe that soon you shall send Jesus. Gather us together. There is many here tonight, Father, that's sick and needy. I feel your spirit now. We all know that you're here. You said wherever two or three are gathered, I'll be in their midst. And we feel you literally with spiritual feeling. We know that you're here. And now, Father, as I have testified to these people concerning a divine gift, they only have my word lest you speak, Lord. But I know that you'll speak, vindicate it, testify of it. All praise and glory is to thee, thou marvelous Son of God. You're so wonderful to redeem us, us poor lost sinners, worthy of death and separation, worthy of hell. But thou has redeemed us. Oh, how my heart jumps when I think that I'm redeemed and just as sure as you're raised from the grave. Someday we shall come forth with a new body. We'll never be sick no more or suffer. Now, dear God, bless tonight those who are here. May the Holy Spirit just move right out over this audience now. Speak to every one of them and say, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, His Spirit moving with us tonight. May they sweetly accept it in the form of the Holy Spirit and be saved and healed tonight. For we ask it in the name of thy Son, Jesus. Amen. I do. It just I'm not a very emotional type person, but my heart's been strangely warm since I've come in here tonight. For some cause, I don't know why. I trust that God will pour out His Spirit yet tonight over the whole audience. And tomorrow I pray there will be one gleaming light of God around this little place. All people, fast and pray. Get ready. Jesus is coming soon. I believe it. Be ready. What to go to prophecy if we should gain all the world then lose our soul? What good would it do? No good at all. Let's serve him with all of our hearts. Father, lining up the audience, Let's pray again just a moment. Father, come near now. Abide with us, Jesus. Bless us tonight. There's those who are here so are looking so anxiously, and it's seemingly that just a little 
X Street blessing is on us tonight somehow, or just around near. Maybe you're just fixing to pour out the Spirit upon us. We pray that it will be, Father. Heal all. Now, the angel of God that you sent to me at my birth, guided me down through life by your hand. He who meets and talks and shows the visions that I speak of. Oh, Jesus, send him now in thy name, that he might be able to discern the gift of discernment to know the heart. Said the things that I do, these shall you do also and greater. You knew the heart of all people. You knew all diseases. You told Philip where he was at before he came to the prayer line. You told him where to find the horses tied. You told him where an empty room was to make ready the Last Supper. Oh, you told the woman of her sins. And then one day they tied a rag around your eyes, pulled beard out of your face and spit on you, said, Now prophesy and say, Who spoke? Lord, you never opened your mouth. We're thankful for your wonderful life, for the spirit that you have given us to live by. Help us now. And may every disease that passes this away, may great visions and wonders be done tonight. Grant it, Lord. And as the people see these things done, may they accept thee right then. In the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. And I just somehow, I believe that there's great things going to happen, don't you? Look, Moses performed his signs one time before the children of Israel, and every one of them believed him. Is that right? He didn't have to put his hands in the second line to make his sign. He didn't have to turn his stick into a serpent. They believed. Therefore, one sign that I speak of, that he gave for a sign, if one sign can be proven, then you to accept it. And remember, as he's healing you on the platform, he could be healing out there at the same time. You believe him. Don't worry about getting up here. Just accept him right where you are. Then God will heal you right where you're sitting now. You believe it? All right. All right. I ever want to be real ready and pray. And now, oh, I wish you all felt like I do just now. Such a feeling. Peace just feels like you're just real life. Holy Spirit's in the building. The blessing. And uh, help. I know none of you. Then the one person who is very And I don't know what's wrong with you. God knows that. I don't know one thing's wrong with you. But I have to depend on you until you pray with me, Christian.
a crowd was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Had the Spirit that was in Christ returned back to the earth in the form of the Holy Spirit lives in the church today, nine spiritual gifts to be given to the church. And now you being a stranger to me, you know nothing of you. Well, if I ever know what's wrong with you, it being revealed by a spiritual being at that time. You're weary, aren't you? You've been thinking a whole lot, sister. I'm not reading your mind. I do just now some, now so the audience will know. A real strange feeling just begins coming on you. That's right, raise your hand. Now that's when your spirit is contacting the gift. Now it just feels to me I'm getting weak, you see. Just before a vision probably is fixing to take place. I do not know. Yes, you're worried. You've been told you had a cancer. Is that right? Just be reverent. Don't fear, sister, believe. Let's see. Now be reverent. Of course, if you feel really numb, that's kind of subsided like that. I just made it broke. You keep looking at me, see. Huh? A doctor never told you that. A man told you you had a cancer. You were in a prayer line. After that, you visited a doctor's office. And he told you you didn't have a cancer. Did he tell you, I see him saying something kind of wrong with that man, wearing a dark stuff and suit. Uh, you're trouble to a drill, isn't it? I'm trying to do a drill. It's nervous, Miss Sister, it's what's wrong with you. Just nerves in your throat. You're going to be all right. She's not right. You have faith now, don't you? Father, your daughter stands here weary and wet up. She feels that she did something wrong, but wrong. Have mercy and be here as now. God console your child. I lay hands up on her in the name of Jesus, thy son, and ask for this nervous taking sensation in her throat to leave her. She can return to her loved one healthy and well just now. Satan leave the girl in the name of Jesus Christ. I love this girl. I ask you to raise your head up. My sister. Was that the truth? Everywhere you have it. You have it. You go home now and you do as I tell you to do. Just forget all about all of it. Go on home, eat, drink, rejoice, and praise the Lord. Tell everybody about your healing and glory by God. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. And my back was so rapid with my elderly one more week. And I it had really ended all because the doctor said that the grass was good for you and my body would be as prior. So one day I got an anointed way to from Dr. Price. And in a few days I got my x-ray and I was loaded up. And as soon as I could walk long enough, I was home. So I was glad that I had such a long testimony. And I really wanted to get it for his honor and glory. Amen. God bless you, sister. All right, let's say praise the Lord. Mother, you, your 
Everybody is weary and stuff, aren't you? Uh, stand up just a moment. Well, the lady with that coat on when I was looking at the other day. She looked like seen something happened before. Have you got some trouble, too? It's a female trouble, isn't it? Is that right? I see you refusing food. I hear you have a stomach trouble too, don't you? Well, Jesus Christ is healed. You go on home and eat what you want to. Be thankful to your prayer. God bless you, Mother. And this car back. Well, I'm going to ask you to stand up and say, Father, I thank you for your son. Be of a good courage. Aren't you a minister? You're a reverend, aren't you? I thought I'd seen a perfect near you. That's your wife, isn't it? She's in a nervous condition. Is that right? I'd be of a good courage. Just keep praying. I've seen a vanish out, but I don't know what happened. And you keep praying with her. Be of a good courage. Are you the patient? Oh, praise the Lord. It's a lot when they put people emotional. You think, well, you're just a little emotional. Now the lady's faith healed her. That's what done the work was her faith. If you only had faith to believe, you can be healed of anything. God bless you, sister. I see you're trouble, but I can't say that. Now you do. I'm trying. How do you do, sister? Let's see your hand just a moment. Look this way, sister. There's many things that you feel is wrong with. But there's one main thing that's causing it all, nervousness. You're extremely nervous, aren't you? You've been that way for a long time, too. Stigmatism in your eyes makes you all weak, isn't that right? When you was a child, it was that way. Yes, when you was just a little girl, school, and so forth, yeah. I see that. You ever eat now? That's his call from your very church. I am that. I used to just have faith in God, but you believe now with all your heart? That's here. Now, look, lady. God, you realize that you're nervous and you're trying to believe. I want you to keep looking. Don't turn your head. Please keep looking this way. Cut off the beach. You believe now. You believe I'll ask him that nervousness will leave you? Yes, ma'am. I know you bow your head and be faithful. Our Heavenly Father, we pray thee to be merciful to our sister, making her aware of our Lord, she's nervous and run down. Many, many weary of this life. Dear God, I pray that you will hear her tonight as I bless her in thy name, trusting that you will make her completely well through Jesus Christ, thy Son. Amen. God bless you, that you're not going to die in them. Believe with all your heart. All right. I'll turn to next patient. How do you do, sir? My brother here, the man was just healed. Just a momentary. You, sir, while I was praying for you, you felt a real cruel feeling go through you, isn't that right? And that everything that you had been doing or so forth, did the Holy Spirit reveal it right here? If you just raise your hand so the audience will know. You're a perfect stranger, aren't you? How many believe that the gift of God has come down from heaven and all this? That's right. It's infallible. It's never. Now you're healing is your faith, but the gift of God is perfect. Perfect. Never fails. Can't fail because it's God. Then if He can be here so close to you and know those things, 
reveal unto you as he promised he would do, these things that I do, greater shall you do, for I go to my Father. Is that right? Now, someone might think that it, it, it seems like it. Many times people think mental telepathy and you know how the, the devil can rage. You know when they told Jesus, they cast out devils through Belzebub. Is that right? The effect of them, they find something. And looking at the people, you might think that that's what caused the people to looking at their eyes and it was reading their mind. That is my plan. It's attracting the spirit that's in the person. See, they got it. And we got a disease, and they're a human being, and their faith got to be built up on this level to believe it, or he won't let loose. See, the, listen at the order of it, ministers especially. Now, here it is, and listen close. If you get the people to believe you, he said, be sincere when you pray, nothing will stand before the prayer. I said they won't believe me, I'm educated. I can't speak right. And I have a full following and so forth. He said, I'll be with you. And you'll be given two signs to cause the people to believe. Now those signs merely cause the people to believe. It does the heal of all their faith is what heal the How many other stand just raise your hand? Oh, that's wonderful. Now, what person do I say? Uh, here comes a, a man sitting here now. Uh, I haven't looked at him. <clears throat> Don't know him. But I'll say to that man, or my dad, turn to the man. If he will believe with all of his heart, and believe the story I have told about this is the truth, <clears throat> God will make more than you. That's wrong. <laughs> you believe it? Say so you believe with all your heart, do you stand there? The patient. You believe with all your heart? All right, I've never touched you. If I be able to tell you what's wrong with you, well, you, you know whether it's the truth or not wrong. Is that right? You expect it coming from God? All right. When you do as I tell you, all right, you can go home now. You're going to get over the heart trouble you had. So the Lord has healed you. Is that it? That's what was wrong with you ever said? God bless you. The Lord Jesus Christ make you whole. Let's bow our heads and pray. Oh, Lady Father, we thank thee for the depths of our heart, for the Spirit of our Son, Jesus Christ, who saves, heals, makes well. God bless everyone in here tonight. May all this audience around everywhere. Believe on you just now and be healed every one of them. May the Holy Spirit just move right down into this audience and heal all the sick and afflicted. Save the unsaved. Bring them to a knowledge of thee and let them know that soon you're coming, dear Jesus, to catch away a people whose spirit is blood washed, ready to go and meet you. Hear the prayer of our humble servant. In Jesus' name, amen. Or right, everybody be reverent. Somebody is right in here is praying. All right, just be reverent, everyone. I think it's someone standing on the line and has not Afraid you're not get in the line. Somebody now I keep contacting. Good evening, sister. Do you love him with all your heart? Because uh, you trust him with all your heart? Do you believe that what you feel is him now? 
All right, then go home and that female trouble you had has left you now. You can go home and be well. Jesus Christ makes you well. But say, praise the Lord. That's the way you're supposed to believe. Amen. Sister, you're trying awful hard, aren't you? Well, looky here. I want you to look this way. I've seen you move twice. But I want to ask you something. We ain't bound in that cock. You're a stranger to me. You're in there disappointed because you couldn't get a prayer card. Isn't that right? You wanted a card so bad. I don't know you, sister. But I do know now what's wrong with you. And I know that you're not going to live for a very few days if something isn't done for you. Because you're suffering with cancer. Isn't that right? Right. You can't live unless something's done for you. I'm going to ask you this as uh, your brother. Why do you lay there till you die? Nothing can be done for you in the medical way. Only faith is the only thing can help you. Isn't that right? Now, why do you believe God's word? Why do you believe this to deserve the spirit to move into the earth? That's the very God of creation. Do you believe that? Do you accept it this day? Do you believe on this this prophet? Do you do? Do you all believe in the same way? Then in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rise up and now and go home. And be well. That's it. It's raised up. Lady, you're the red coat I'm sitting there also. You're the fuck of cancer, aren't you? All right, so look at your hands up if I need to say. The same kind of words that the order to teach, stand up on your feet, Jesus Christ, and make you whole. Thank <laughs> you. 